sekali. Masa menerima. Kenapa sahabat?
Good morning, everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah. Um, so this is the third uh, session for chemical kinetics class uh, with Dr. Sangita Ganesan as the um, invited lecturer. So um, Dr. Shangi. Hi, Dr. Galu. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> so we probably wait for another one minute, then uh, I will start the class. Lah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Hey, hello, good morning, everyone. So, uh, welcome to the class, all right? Uh, and we will start the class today. But before I start, uh, I'd like to ask uh, all of you to quickly uh, you know, go into morning, morning, to quickly go and uh, uh, download while I am uh, showing you how to use the uh, graph multiple, okay? So you can download the uh, app uh, into your computer. I think the class students should know by now uh, that you are supposed to download, but it's okay. If you haven't, it's okay because I'll be showing you how to use it. And we will have a bit of time to, um, you know, try to use it in uh, finding the uh, rate of reaction and so on. Right, uh, especially we want to find initial rates and also instantaneous rate. Okay, so I, I think I told about it in the last uh, class before we end because we ended in when we were discussing about this question. All right, okay, but uh, don't worry about that. Okay, uh, what I want you to do now is okay, you can open your Excel sheet and you can type in um, uh, this data into your Excel sheet. Right, so all of you should have the uh, what do you call the PDF with you, right? So inside there, there is two data. You can type it out, but uh, you can wait first because I will give you time to do it. Let's uh, go into uh, seeing the uh, graphmatica and how we are going to use it. All right, okay. Uh, let me just open, then I can share with you. Okay, can you see the um, graphmatica? Or are you still seeing uh, the PDF? Well, we are still seeing the PDF, doctor. Okay, no, no. I think I need to change screen. Huh? Okay. All right, so this is uh, graphmatica. So this is how you spell G R A P H M A T I C A. Right, so for those who have not, um, uh, you know, downloaded it, you will have time to download it in a while. Okay, so let let me just go through the, the uh, what do you call this uh, web uh, app that I can we can download for free. Yeah, actually, of course, you can also use Excel to plot your graphs. Right, but uh, one good thing about Graphmatica is it is able to give you uh, 
the values uh, very easily because there is a function here known as, uh, you know, it can draw the uh, tangent for you and it can give you the values uh, exactly. Okay, so when you have uh, already downloaded Graphmetrica and when you open it, this is what you will see. Okay, so you will see a graph paper. Okay, and then you have your y axis and also your x axis. And this is how it will look like the range, the group range. Okay, but you don't have to worry about that. Okay, because later I will show you how to change the grid range. Okay, now there will be another box here. Okay, it's called data plot. Right, so if the data plot does not, uh, what they call, uh, appear, you can always click view and you can click on data plot editor and then the box will appear for you. Okay, so this is where your points will be inserted. Okay, so just now, uh, as I told you, you should have gone to, you can go into Excel and you can either type out one by one or if your values are already inside Excel, you can actually just copy and paste it. So what you do now is, okay, I will show you example. Huh? Uh, let me see this one. Okay. So you can go into Excel, right? And then you can copy the value that you need. So as I said, you can also plot with Excel. Okay, so this is how the graph will look if you were to plot it in Excel. So you can copy your values, okay? And then you go to your graph metrica. You cannot uh, paste normal, but you have to use uh, edit and paste data plot. Okay, so hold on. Now. Hold on, now. My, my computer is lagging for a while. Just give it a few minutes. Okay, so basically when you when you paste data plot, so you see the, 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 all the values are already here. So usually, if your grid is in the right range, okay, you can, you'll be able to see all the uh, values there. Okay, so now you see, you can only see one value because your grid is not in range with your values. Okay, so what you can do now is you can go to grid range, view, grid range, okay, now here you can change, okay, left and right, okay, so this is right, so this is your x-axis and this is your left, so looking at your range in your uh, values, okay, so you, your left, you don't have to be big, okay, your left is can be small, eight, I'm sorry, zero, your right, because it ends at 800, so you can put as 900, okay, now, top to bottom, your bottom can be zero, okay? And your, the top, because it is uh, 0 0.1, okay? So you can perhaps put 0 0.1, um, 1, 2 or 1, 5 or something, okay? So, but don't worry about it because you can always adjust. Okay, if let's say now you don't really like it to be here, you can go back to view, grid range, and you can change the range, okay? So, uh, in that way, it is uh, easy to, to uh, what do you call, to uh, manipulate or, you know, change your grids and so on, okay? So, now, the next thing you want to do now is you want to, because this one is like a scatter plot when you draw in your Excel, okay? So, now you want to draw a line, right? So, you can go to your options, okay? And then you can choose your exponential. You can try this one later on, okay? I'm just going to show you one type of graph. Okay, later on, if you want to use your graphmatica for other mathematical, uh, you know, uh, problems or equations and so on, you can also use. Uh, but for this class, we will be looking at the exponential graph. Okay, and we can click on curve fit. Okay, so you can see down here it is graphing. So that means it's drawing the graph. So you let it draw. Okay, now it has drawn the graph. Okay, so you can choose back the symbol or uh, you can change the color of the symbol and so on. Okay, I will remain as black so that you'll be able to see. Okay, so from here you can see that it's able to draw on all your uh, points. Okay, very nicely. Okay, so next what you want to do, 
Okay, so from the question, okay, if you look at your question, we want to find uh, initial rate and instantaneous rate at 500. Okay, so this is where your graphmatica becomes very useful. Okay, because you can draw a tangent and you can click which point you want your tangent to be. Okay, let's say I want it at zero to find the, uh, what do you call my uh, initial rate. Okay, which is the tangent at zero. Okay, so you can see here in this box. Okay, you can see in this box, it can already give you the slope for the tangent line. So you don't really have to calculate anything. Like it can already give you, right? Okay, so that is one good thing about uh, using this because you can, um, uh, you know, automatically get the slope. Okay, so uh, you can do the same. Uh, okay, then you can undo it and then you can click at any point okay let's say just now you say at 500 okay then now you get your slope at 500 okay so that is how you can use a uh, graph metrica to help you with the plotting of the graph as well as uh, getting the slope for your uh, initial rate as well as instantaneous rate okay all right okay now can i give you a uh, Okay, let's see. I will give you five, uh, five minutes. Maybe you can try out. Okay, you can download and you can try out. Okay, and uh, determine for me once you have drawn the graph. I want you to determine for me the instantaneous rate at uh, 300 as well as 200. Okay, then I will call out one person. Uh, maybe two person. One person will give me the value at 200. The other person will give me the value at 300. Okay. Can you try it now? Okay. It's a very easy, uh, what do you call, uh, this one to use. Uh, you can try and if you are not sure, you can just ask me. Okay. Let, I'll give you 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, untuk yang baru bergabung, uh, Dr. Shangi uh, meminta untuk mendownload program ya, software uh, Graphmatica bisa diperoleh di Google saja. Jadi silakan di Google, tadi tulisannya Graph, G-R-A-P-H-M-A-T-I-C-A, ya, Graphmatica. Uh, maybe I could send the link ya, Dr. to the chat. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Kita bisa menggambar dari Excel juga, tapi tadi fitur yang diharapkan itu menggambar tangan ya, menggambar slope. Nah itu yang 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 mungkin lebih bermanfaat menggunakan atau lebih mudah menggunakan Graphmatica. Ya, yeah, free download. Ya. Yeah. Download from here. Okay, Graphmatica.com and you can click here and you can download. Very fast. The download is very fast. Uh, and you can use it for other than uh, you know this as well, right? So it's good to keep in your computer. Okay. If you are looking at changing the grid line, okay, it's a view uh, under view, grid range. If you want to get the data plot, it's data plot editor. Okay. And if you want to copy and paste your value from Excel, is edit, paste data plot. So actually you just need to know these three main things. Okay, how to get the data plot table, how to paste your data from Excel, and also how to change <coughs> Okay. Coba uh, bisa mengacungkan tangan yang sudah berhasil download. Bisa raise hand, please. For those who have uh, been successfully downloaded the program. <coughs> okay. So. <coughs> ok, 
Okay, I will type in a few of the commands that you will need to use uh, in the chat box. That look, looks like uh, we need a while for the yeah. students to download the program. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe one or two students have already done it. You can yeah, I think I think that there are like yeah. uh, fifteen student raise hands. Okay, okay, good. Currently. Never mind. Uh, because I want to give them five minutes so that they can give me the value at two hundred and three hundred. Yeah. Can yeah. we can yeah. I have two students who can give me the value, right? Yeah. So it's very simple. You can also use the the command that I've actually written in the what do you call in the chat box, huh? Maybe some student can also share their skin screen, doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shortly, yeah, shortly. Okay, you can also see the chat box for how you want to. Uh, uh, manipulate your the graph inside all right okay so we will see how many of you okay let's see how many of you managed to do it okay nice I see quite a number eh? valencia rivaldi barry Okay, maybe we can have uh, one student. Maybe you can uh, uh, show us how did you do it. Uh, let's see. Barik, can you show us? Uh, um, so screen, but I'm, not, I'm not finished yet, doctor. Okay, okay. okay. Once you're done, you can share, share your screen. Uh, huh? okay. uh, then you can give me the value at 200. Then we can have another student to give me the value at uh, 300. Let's okay, see. okay, doctor. Okay, I hope you guys are trying. Uh. Not just waiting for Barik. <laughs> okay, I will have another student uh, also. Uh, maybe the next student to give me the value at 300 will be uh, Valencia. Valencia can give me the value at 300. Yeah. Okay, the slope.
Farid, are you done? Uh, I kind of confused with the curve doctor. Okay, maybe you can show me. You can share your screen. You can show me. Okay. Uh, okay. I, think I need to stop share first. Yeah. Can I search screen right now, Doctor? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. Um, it haven't appeared yet. I think you need to give it a few seconds. All right. Okay, you know why? Because your range. Okay, your grid range, if you look at it. Okay. I have, oh. Ah, you see the bottom, it cannot be 300 because your, your, your total value is 900 at least 900 because you see your x is until 800 right yes oh uh, so this one should be at least 900 so that everything can fall in the grid range yeah so the bottom this one you can put the top is uh, 0 0.12 or 0 0.15 okay because your highest value is 0 0.1 uh, okay click okay uh, you see now it's there Yes. Uh, okay, now you go to options. Now here, down here, uh, at the, in the box, in the box. Oh, in the box. The box, okay. yeah, options. Okay, then you go to exponential graph, exponential. Yeah, okay. Cool. Right, then you go to curve fit. Curve fit. Yes, and then you click again your symbol, actually. You click your symbol. Uh, <coughs> oh, this, okay. Yes, click on it. Uh, okay. Okay, it should actually be uh, in the range, okay? I'm not sure why it's just looking like this, right? It should, it should actually get like what I got just now. But it's okay, never mind. Later you can try again and see. Because I think there's another graph up there. I'm not sure why, okay? Yeah, but okay. Uh, basically, this is how you do it, all right? And then you use the, can you see that uh, tangent here? Uh, the, the line with the red curve? Okay. In, in all the symbols there, the symbols there, up here, up, uh, up somewhere, up, below it, below it, below it. No, uh, can you see the printer here? The printer symbol here? Oh, uh, okay. Along it, along, no, no, along it, you don't have to click there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, along it, can you see the line, the black line with the red curve? Oh, this, doctor? No, no, up somewhere. Go back sejajar the... sejajar dengan printer tadi. Oh. Ah, sejajar. Sejajar yeah, terus betul -betul. ke pinggir, ke pinggir terus. Lagi lagi, lagi sampai jumpa tangent. Uh, terus okay. sebelah d per dx, sebelah d per dx. Ah. Lagi lagi. Itu terus ke pinggir ada d per dx, nah sebelahnya itu ada. Oh, uh, sorry. Tangent, uh, tangent. Kehalangin ini. Sebelah, sebelah d over dx. Can I stop share first? I can, can. Um, okay, but basically, I hope uh, everyone can, uh, you know, um, understand. Okay, I can show from my screen. Uh, let me just take one minute to show it from my screen. Okay. Okay. So, the the one that uh, Barik just now supposed to click is here. This. Okay. You can see the one line. And then the curve here, right? Okay, so that's what you're supposed to click. So this is this what gives you tangent. So when you click on it, they, then you can click on any point, okay? And it can give you the uh, slope, okay? So I can click at 200, then I click again, I click at 200, and then you can give me the slope. Oh, yeah, yes, I, I uh, did, doctor. Okay, uh, okay. Can you, uh, never mind, you don't have to show, but can you give me the value at 200? Negative uh, point zero. Wait, okay. Um, negative point triple zero two. Mm, okay. All right. So depending on the graph that you have uh, plotted, okay. 
But uh, what happens just now is I think you need to replot again because there's two graphs on your on your uh, what do you call on your uh, graph paper. Uh, yes. Okay, yes. so there could be some uh, mistake there. But never mind, you guys can try it later. Okay, but basically that's how you use your graphmatica to find tangent. Uh, all right. Okay, so uh, I will stop with the graphmatica for now. Okay, but you can go and try it again on your own. Okay, you have the data, you can try to plot. You can also try to plot from other data that you have. Okay, so let's uh, go back to uh, our lecture today. Okay, so basically uh, uh, the reason why we show you graphmatica just now will be to easily get the answers at the points. Okay, so if you have Grammatica, you can easily, when you click on it, you can immediately get the uh, value of your slope. Okay, but of course, if you don't have Grammatica, then you can plot your graph um, uh, manually, and then you can draw your uh, tangent, and then draw your triangle, and you calculate based on uh, concentration over the Period of time. Okay, so your time is in seconds. All right, so uh, this is something that we actually looked at last week. Nah? All right, so basically, uh, what you need to remember is when, you're, when you want to compare the rate between your uh, reactants and your product, okay, so your reactants will decrease over time and your product will increase over time. Okay, so you have to remember that. All right. So uh, an instantaneous rate is basically the slope at any point of time okay, for that particular species. Okay, whether you're talking about the reactor or if you were to plot for your products. Okay, now that is one example, right? So another example will be uh, consider another experiment. Okay, for example, if you want to do uh, or determine the catalytic decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, for example. Okay, so that means you only have hydrogen peroxide and then you put in your catalyst, manganese oxide. All right, so when this, uh, when, when in the presence of manganese oxide, your hydrogen peroxide will actually uh, start decomposing. Okay, so when it decomposes, it decomposes into water and oxygen. Okay, so what you can do is you can measure the volume of oxygen that's being uh, released in the reaction. Okay, so you can do a setup that looks like this, but of course, uh, there is one thing that you need to do is um, let me just okay. Uh, for example, uh, here of course you need to put a stopper, right? If not, when you mix your uh, what do you call catalyst with uh, your hydrogen peroxide, your oxygen will be released. To the atmosphere okay in order to not for that to happen in your uh what do you call uh, conical flask you have to put a stopper and the stopper that is connected to a glass tube okay so the glass tube can go into a beaker of water with a measuring cylinder on top of it okay so what will happen is when the reaction takes place here the oxygens will be Release okay, the oxygen will be released here. Okay, the oxygen is released and it will go into the measuring cylinder. So you can actually uh, measure your uh, amount or volume of oxygen that's being released at perhaps maybe every two minutes or so. Okay, all right. Then when you plot your graph, okay, when you plot your graph, you will get something that looks like this. Okay, so this is the method to measure initial rate of product formation based on the volume of oxygen release, released at intervals. Okay, now that is if you want to measure your product, which is oxygen. Okay, so what you want to do, uh, so what if you want to uh, measure now the disappearance, okay, or the consumption of your hydrogen peroxide, okay? So if you want to do that instead, so all you have to do is add another, uh, what you call a weighing balance to your experimental setup, 
Okay, so as your hydrogen peroxide is being decomposed, you can measure the change in your hydrogen peroxide, uh, uh, what they call the uh, uh, mass, all right? Okay, so this can uh, show you the reduction in mass of hydrogen peroxide and which also can be measured at intervals. So from the graph, you can see that your reactants will be consumed. So the concentration will reduce with time, okay? Just now, your product are being produced, so the concentration will increase with time, okay? So when you actually plot the graphs together, okay, hold on, let me just uh, remove the annotation. Um, okay. So when you actually plot both of the graph together, if if lah, if you want to plot the both the graph together on the same uh, what do you call uh, uh, axis, okay, you can see the product is going up and then the reactant will be going down. Okay, so from here you can see that the tangent or the slope of your product will give you a positive value. Okay, and the tangent or the slope of the reactant will give you a negative value because the reactants are decreasing with time, okay? And the product is increasing with time, okay? Now, I just want you to uh, uh, take note of this one thing. Okay, let me just... Um, okay, here, make these changes. Huh? This is not negative. The rate of formation is not negative. Rate of consumption is negative. Rate of formation is not negative. Okay, there shouldn't be any sign here. So help me to remove it. Okay, in your notes. All right. Okay. Okay. Now, before we go on further, okay, I want to um, share a video with you. All right. Let me just um, share it. I'm gonna. Okay, so let's look at uh, one video uh, that was obtained from YouTube. Okay, uh, it is actually the done by GS, uh, GCSE Chemistry of Reaction Rate. Okay, so later at the end of the video, you'll be able to see uh, the link where you can actually go in to see more of the videos that's being uh, produced by this uh, group of people. All right, okay, so. In this video, we're going to look at the rate of chemical reactions, which just refers to the speed with which the reactants get turned into products. And we'll also see how we can measure this rate and how to show it on graphs. First though, it's worth understanding just how much the rate of reaction can vary. For a slow reaction, think of the rusting of iron, which can take years or decades. A more typical rate is something like the reaction between magnesium and an acid, which produces a gentle stream of hydrogen bubbles. Then at the other extreme, we have explosions like fireworks, which take place in just a fraction of a second. In order to actually measure the rate of a reaction though, we need to measure either how fast the reactants are being used up, or alternatively, how fast the products are being formed. Because the faster the rate, the faster the reactants will be used up and turned into products. So in the form of an equation, we have two options. Either we can say that the rate of reaction is equal to the quantity of reactants used over the time it took for that change to occur, or that the rate of reaction is equal to the quantity of products formed over the time taken, with the quantities measured in grams or centimeters cubed and time in seconds. For example, if we knew that our magnesium and acid reaction produced 180 centimeters cubed of hydrogen in two minutes, then because hydrogen is a product, we would use our product formed equation and do 180 centimeters cubed divided by 120 seconds. Because remember, we have to convert our two minutes into seconds, which would give us a rate of 1.5 centimeters cubed per second. Alternatively, if we had used 3 grams of magnesium and were told that it took 4 minutes to disappear completely and get used up, then we could use the other equation, 
and do 3 grams divided by 4 times 60, so 240 seconds, which gives us 0.0125 grams per second. Now, these rates of reactions that we've calculated so far are actually the average or mean rates of reaction throughout the entire reaction. In reality, the rate would start off really fast when there are loads of reactants that can react together and then slow down as the reaction progresses and the reactants get used up. We can actually see how this works by plotting some graphs with time on the x-axis and either mass of reactant remaining or volume of product produced on the y-axis. So on our left graph here, if we started with 3 grams of magnesium, then the mass of our reactant would start at 3 grams and at first fall quite rapidly. But then it would slow as the reaction progresses and it gets used up less quickly. Meanwhile, for our other graph, we know that at the beginning of the reaction we have no products, so it starts at zero. However, it very quickly increases as lots of hydrogen is produced at the beginning of the reaction. Then, as the reaction progresses, the graph becomes less steep and finally starts to plateau as you run out of magnesium. Now, as well as using grams or centimeters cubed per second, we can also use other units like moles or decimeters cubed per second, or even per minute. For example, if we were told that 0.6 moles of magnesium were used in two minutes, then to calculate the rate in moles per minute, we would just do 0.6 divided by 2 to give us 0.3 moles per minute. So it really isn't any different to before. You just have to be careful about which units they want the answer in. Anyway, cheers for watching. In our next video, we're going to see how to calculate the rate of reaction at a particular time. Okay, so uh, this particular video was uh, actually obtained from uh, these guys, uh, uh, cognito.edu.org, uh, so you can also check them out, all right, for other videos. But uh, basically, uh, it's a representation of uh, whatever that we have, uh, you know, seen so far, okay, in our uh, uh, reaction earlier, all right? So basically, it explains uh, another experiment, okay, on, 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 on how to, uh, plot the graph and also what does it mean actually okay so uh, to continue with our next lesson now all right okay so uh, earlier we were using uh, you know uh, an examples of like for example your uh, hydrogen peroxide and so on okay so in order to put everything into perspective to get a very general equation so that you can understand how this can be applied to any kind of experiment that you want to do, all right, in order for you to uh, determine the rate, okay? So, for example, if you have a general equation, for example, like A plus 2B to produce 3C plus D, okay? So, this is just a general uh, assumption, okay? Now, A and B will become your uh, reactants and C and D is your products, okay? So, the stoichiometry is one of A, we need two of B to produce three of C and one of D. Okay, the stoichiometry is important. Eh? So keep that in mind, right? Now, if you were to only write your instantaneous rate, okay, so let's say you want to write the instantaneous rate of consumption of the reactant, okay? So if you're only talking about, okay, if you're only talking about the consumption, okay, of your reactant, Okay, so if let's say you are talking about A, right, D, R over DT minus where R is A or B, okay, that is instantaneous rate of consumption. Now, if it is rate of formation, okay, that means your product are being formed, so it's no longer negative. Huh? So please huh, make, make sure this is not negative in your notes, huh? All right? Okay, you can also do not write positive, okay, you can just leave it empty, that's fine, okay, for products, but What's more important for reacting, it must be negative, okay? So D, P, where P can be C or D, okay? Which is your product. Now, what happens if you want to compare your reactants to your products? When you want to compare your reactants to your products, you must take into consideration 
of your stoichiometry. Okay, all right, because one of A reacts with two of B to give you three of C and one of D. Okay, so if you take the differential, okay, of how the concentration of D changes over time and you want to equate it to C, so that means your differential of C over time must be one over three, which is the stoichiometry. Okay, and that is also equals to negative dA over dt. Okay, that means the differential how the A changes over time. Okay, which is equals to negative one over two, which is the stoichiometry for B. That means dB over dt. So when you choose to compare, all right, when you choose to compare, okay, when you choose to compare, then this becomes you have to write it together with the stoichiometry of the reaction. Okay, all right. Now, this is for a general equation. Now, can you, all right, I want uh, to give you a question here. Okay, I want all of you to try, okay, to answer this question. Okay, to write for me to relate the reactant and product reaction rates. Okay, similar to this. Can you write it out? Okay, write it out quickly. I give you five minutes to write it on a uh, on a piece of paper. Then maybe you can just snap a picture and share it with us, or you can also write it in a word document. Okay, and you share it with us. We I will. Ask a two person to share your answer. Okay, one if the first person get it right, then we don't have to uh, get another person. Okay, so but you can do it now. All right, I give you five minutes. Can you quickly write out? Okay, when ammonia reacts with oxygen to form nitrogen monoxide and steam. Okay, most important is you must know how to balance your equation. Okay, once you have write out your equation, you have to balance your equation, and then you can write this for your equation, okay? Then you can share it here, right? So take five minutes quickly, write out. Maybe we can have Valencia to show your answer because just now I couldn't uh, allow you because it took too long. Maybe now Valencia can share your answer. Oh, I'm sorry, doctor. I cannot because I use my handphone for Zoom. Oh, okay. Then never mind. Who can share your answer other than Valencia then? Let's see. Let me call out another person for my list. Maybe we can have... Uh, Adisti Eka Putri. Adisti Eka Putri, yeah? Can you share your answer? After you are done, of course. Uh, I'm sorry that I um, finish. Sorry, tak siap lagi ke? Um... Okay, you can write it out first, then you can show us. Okay, basically, you need to know the, uh, uh, what do you call the formula for ammonia. Okay, then you add with oxygen. Then you form uh, nitrogen oxide. And steam is uh, H2O, right? 
and then you can relate the reaction rates of the reactant and product. Okay, can we have Adisti? Are you done? Or is there anyone want to help Adisti? Um, yes, Adisti. You can speak in Malay, uh, in Bahasa, it's okay. Uh, I'm sorry, doctor. I'm I'm a confused, so can I don't have... have okay, you don't have the answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyone can help Adisti? It's okay. Someone can help her. If you have your answer, you want to share with us, maybe we can take a look at what answer you have. If it's, if it's wrong, it's okay. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, because I will give the answer after that. Anyone else? Or maybe Bari want to try again? Anyone? No? Okay, nobody wants to try, then I have to give you the answer. Okay, I hope, I hope you can, uh, some of you are maybe quiet, too shy, eh? too shy to answer, but I hope you know, eh? okay? Uh, okay, let's try out the answer for you. Doctor? Yes? <laughs> I will okay. try. Okay, uh, yes, thank you. Yes. Thank you, thank um, you for trying. Uh, you can share, uh, share your screen. Uh, I'm not. Uh, saya mengerja, saya mengerjakannya pakai uh, pakai itu dokter pakai apa sih buku? Oh, pakai buku, okay. Uh, uh, apa tak apa? Uh, you can uh, tell me and I can write it out then. Okay. Hmm. Jadi, uh, can I speak bahasa? Okay. 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 Thank can. you, oh, dokter. I'm can. sorry. Huh. Okay. Jadi uh, di sana itu kan terdapat uh, reaksi amonia dengan oksigen okay. dan uh, akan menghasilkan atau akan menghasilkan yaitu nitrogen monoksida atau NO. Ya. Yeah. Yeah. Nah kemudian uh, ditambah dengan H2O. Eh yeah, betul. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, kemudian kita uh, samakan. Koefisiennya gitu ya yang bereaksi karena sesuai dengan uh, PPT atau slide sebelumnya gitu. Nah hmm. NH3 itu bisa uh, menjadi dua kalinya. Betul? <laughs> dua kalinya NH3. Oke. Okay. Ditambah dua. NO2 di sana kan itu ada um, jadi, uh, kalau NO itu jadinya dua. NOI dua, ya dua, uh -huh. kemudian uh, H2O, H2O-nya menjadi tiga, tiga, ya, Dan kemudian berapa? untuk oksigennya berarti hmm. lima per dua, oke okay, lima per dua, oke okay, boleh kita uh, uh, simplify, jadi kita darab dua, kalau darab dua semuanya, oke okay, kalau darab oh, yes. dua, dia akan jadi, jadi empat, empat, lima lima uh, empat dan enam enam oke okay, betul oke okay, I'm sorry doctor no problem no problem it's okay so after that how do you write the rate okay rate of formation of nitrogen monoxide okay of oh, formation ah yeah. uh, oh berarti di uh, dicari itu dokter dicari apa uh, ya yeah, rate oh okay. ya yeah. satu per empat D, okay, and O, and O, yeah. Nah, kemudian, 
Okay. Dia akan okay. plus 2. Kemudian, ini adalah produk. So, dia tak ada negatif. Jadi, okay, tak apa. Let me just put... Um, Senang untuk nampak sikit Okay, so sekarang uh, Ammonia Ammonia akan jadi Negatif eh? Because it is a reactant Reactant Ya, satu per Empat Okay Kemudian okay. NH3 Dan. Per Detek. Okay. Kemudian equals to negatif. Um, satu per lima. Betul, eh? Satu per lima. D oksigen. Okay. Per detek. Okay, betul. Okay. Boleh ya? Okay. So that is the answer. Okay, so I hope everybody can get it. Huh? You must be able to write this out. Okay, All right. So uh, first, the thing one one of the most important thing you must be able to write out uh, uh, what you call a balance equation. Okay, mesti kena tahu macam mana nak tulis uh, balance equation. All right. Kemudian, you must know how to relate your reactants to the product. Okay. Boleh ya? Okay. Alright. So. Okay. Let's move on. Alright. Yeah. Sekejap ya. Okay. So moving on. Um, now that you know how do you relate and, and you know the meaning behind uh, uh, you know, the general equation that I've shown you, all right, and also how to apply it when you have a real question situation, okay? Now, what we have done so far is we are trying to look at the individual species and we are trying to, to give you the instantaneous rate, okay? So, when it is individual species, then you give it a, a, an instantaneous rate, okay? But what if you want to give the full rate? Okay, so in order to understand uh, how we are going to write the full rate or the definition, the real definition behind rate of reaction, okay, we cannot be using this individual rate. So all needs to be combined and then we will report it as um, with reference to a particular species, all right? So in order to combine all the different rates, we can use the extent of reaction. Okay. Now, this part of the lecture is just to help you to understand uh, the meaning behind the rate of reaction. Okay, So we will have a question later on also to, to answer Okay, after this. Let me just go through this with you. And after this, we will break into groups and I will want you to look at the question and try to understand and answer another question there. And I will explain to you in more detail in the group if you don't understand, all right? So, but for now, let's go through this first, okay? So, if you want to combine all the different rates, you can use the extent of reaction epsilon, all right? So, basically, epsilon is the change in the number of moles over the stoichiometry. Now, J actually refers to the species. It can be either the reactant or it can be the product species, okay? So uh, please change in your notes. Huh? I think the J here and the J here, uh, it, it is uh, what you call a small letter. So I need, it to, I need you to change to big letter. All the J is big letter. It's not small letter J. Okay, uh, down here as well. Huh? So epsilon actually gives you the, the change in the number of mole, okay, over the stoichiometry of the species, depending on which species you are talking about. Okay, and... Uh, v here refers to the stoichiometry, okay? And mu is the rate of reaction, okay? So this one you have to get, uh, get it first, uh, all right? Uh, please write down somewhere in your notes, N is the mole and big V is the volume, this V, yeah? Let me just use something. It's easier to show you, uh. okay? 
right? So this big V, right? The big V here is the volume, right? So if you want to uh, combine or you want to give a rate of reaction, okay? So the rate of change of the extent of reaction, mu, or the rate of reaction is actually, right? One over volume, okay? To the differential of the extent of reaction over dt. Okay, so because this one is the extent of reaction, this actually refers to your change in the number of mole, right? Change in the number of mole, right? So when you put this into here, okay, when you replace the epsilon with the change in the uh, number of mole over time, okay, all right, and you times the dv, but you have your stoichiometry here. Okay, so that means you're trying to combine this with your rate of reaction. So that's where it will show that your stoichiometry of your reaction becomes important. Okay, now here you have volume and here you have change in number of mole. What does that mean? All right. If you remember, okay, you should remember, huh? Your N is actually equals to MV, correct? Correct? Your N is actually equals to MV, all right? So when you have N here over the volume, so you are actually looking at the concentration, all right? So that is how you get the, uh, what do you call the concentration change in concentration over time. And for rate of reaction, you need to take the, uh, what you call the stoichiometry of the reaction into consideration. Okay? All right. Okay. Let's go to the next page. All right. Let me just... Okay, so when you have understood how did your, uh, what do you call your rate of reaction come into play, okay, so now it becomes the uh, J, the concentration of your J, all right? So the concentration of your J, it can be either your reactant or your product, okay? Over with the stoichiometry of the J in the reaction, okay? So this is your rate of reaction. Okay, so when you uh, calculate, okay, over the change of time, right, the concentration over the change of time, right, it can give you mole per dm cube per second, okay? Now, you can also use this, and if you times by Avogadro number, right, and then you change the dm cube to cm cube, right? So you can also do this. You can always change the unit. So depending on your question, if you're, question is asking for mole per dm cube, then you have to answer in mole per dm cube. But if your question is asking you to give you molecules, then you have to times by the Avocadro number, right? So that is for homogeneous reaction, right? So you can also have it for heterogeneous reaction. This is more of to give you, um, to, to explain to you what is actually happening, right? So when you use a heterogeneous reaction, you actually have a solid, right? So all this is in a liquid or a gas system. This one is for a solid system. So mostly we don't really deal with solid system, but this is just for your information, okay? But what is more important is this, okay? Understanding this, right? This is your rate of reaction, okay? Right? Now, okay, so let's look at one uh, example here, all right? So let's look at this example before we can try out the question at the bottom, okay? So let's say I have two NOBR, okay? And when it uh, being consumed, it produces NO, two NO plus PR2, okay? Now, if you remember, the rate of formation of NO is, okay, it is given, uh, okay? Let's say it is given, the rate of formation of NO is 0 0.16, okay, uh, typo here, uh, it should be, Sorry, yeah. this should be millimole. Huh? Okay, this should be millimole. Right? 
Okay, this should be millimole. Eh? Please make the change eh? in your notes. Millimole per dm cube per second. Eh? Just make the change here. Eh? Right? So the rate of formation of NO is given as 0 0.16. Okay? But you know that the stoichiometry for NO is plus 2 and the stoichiometry for NOBR is negative 2. Okay? So if you were to ask to calculate the rate of reaction, so that you need to take your rate of formation and you need to divide it by 2 if the rate of reaction is based on NO. Okay? Then it will give you 0 0.08. Okay, so if you're asked to calculate the rate of reaction based on NOBR, you also need to divide by 2, but now you have negative. Okay, negative uh, 0.08. Now, uh, however, the rate of consumption of NOBR is still this because you are not actually, uh, it's similar to the instantaneous rate. Okay, you are not actually uh, comparing between the two. Okay, so if rate of formation is 0 0.16, the rate of consumption of NOBR will also be 0 0.16 because this is 2 is to 2. Okay, because this is 2 is to 2, so the rate of formation will be the same as the rate of consumption. Okay, now this is where I say you can either give your answer in millimole per dm cube per second or if you are uh, asked in your question to give you in number of molecules, then you have to use your Avogadro number. Okay. Now, what I want to do now is, okay, uh, we are going to uh, break into groups, okay, like last week, all right? So you can try this question and I will go into your groups to explain to you how to do it, all right? So uh, similar to last week, uh, the students who are registered can be in group one to five. Okay, registered students can be in group one to five, and all the other students can be in other groups. Is that okay? In Tagalog, can we break into groups? Okay. Ya, saya akan buka grupnya. Uh, jadi ada 10 grup ya. Uh, doctor, are we going to um, to make the member is the same as before? Uh, no, 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 it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Oh, the, the, the member doesn't matter. Okay. So partisipan dapat memilih grup ya. Silakan nanti diklik breakout room. Nanti pilih roomnya berapa. Tapi untuk room 1 sampai 5 itu untuk uh, yang meng, uh, mengontrak ya, yang mengontrak mata kuliah. Silakan, okay, sudah dok. bisa dilihat. Not shown up yet, dokter. Ya, yeah. sudah bisa sekarang? Yes, dokter, yes. Oke, okay. thank you. So for group one and five, it is only for registered students. So the student who initially registered to this class. And then for the other students, participants that uh, sit in in this class, they can choose uh, group six until 10. Yeah? Okay, group four got too many people. I'm going to move you to group one. Your friend is lonely there. <laughs> right? <laughs> Okay, uh, as soon as you are in the group, please quickly start uh, looking for the answer, yeah?
And I will come in to um, explain. Adisti Alivia sudah bisa masuk ya ke grup mana saja. Nur Hasha dan Yahmin.
Kruchain Prikrum Sekunu Lapan atau sepuluh Terus lapan
Okay, so I think almost everyone is here. All right, so uh, I've actually shared the answer with uh, everybody. Now, uh, I will share my answer uh, with you now. Um, okay, for the benefit of those who, the groups, the, the bigger group, yeah. So just now I went in to explain, right? So uh, based on your question just now, okay, two CH3 produces one uh, CH3, CH3, okay? So the rate of uh, consumption of your CH3 is negative 1.2 mole per dm cube per second, okay? So in order to find the rate of reaction, so it's based on CH3, if based on CH3, negative, uh, sorry, negative one over two times by the uh, rate of consumption of your DCH3, D, okay? So you can get 0 0.6. However, the rate of formation, right? In terms of rate of formation, you can see just now from the question, two CH3 produce one CH3, CH3, okay? So if you write out the rate of formation, okay? You, if you compare between your reactant and your product, okay? So your CH3, CH3, it doesn't have negative because it is the formation of your product, okay? So it becomes CH6, all right? So uh, later I will uh, share this in the Padlet so that you can, um, you know, check, double check with your answer, all right? So uh, going back to our lecture, all right? So let's go in a little bit more, all right? Okay. All right? So uh, in order to consider, okay, another question to consider. Okay, so this one, the answers are already here. So let me just go through with you so that you understand uh, what we have been, uh, you know, trying to uh, define in the last few slides, all right? So this is an example where you want to consider the decomposition of your N2O5 to produce NO2 and oxygen, okay? So... In uh, 700 seconds, okay, they have uh, measured the uh, disappearance or the consumption of N2O5 and the production of NO2 and oxygen, okay? So you can see here that the reactants, okay, uh, from the value, the concentration, your N2O5, it decreases with time, okay? But your product, NO2 and oxygen, increases with time. Okay, from here. Lah. Now, if you were to plot all of the three graphs into the same uh, uh, axis, all right, you will find that, okay, uh, this is for NO2, which is your product, okay, and this is your oxygen, which is also your product, and the uh, orange line is your reactant. So, your reactant decreases. Um, I think uh, can you guys mute someone's uh, someone's uh, mic is on I think. Okay. All right. okay so uh gray the gray one is the product okay and the yellow is the product and the orange is the reactor okay so let's just take one instance all right we want to know uh, how did the rate of reaction is in between 300 to 400 seconds, okay? So if you were to look at this, if you were to find the, the difference between your 300 to 400, okay, you will, you will see that the rate for NO2 and the rate for uh, what you call your reactant and the rate for oxygen looks like very different. Correct. If you take it at the same point, then it is very different. Okay. So this is where if you were to compare the values in the graph between 300 to 400, each of the rate will have different values. Correct. So although they are the same reaction, how come the rates are different? Okay. So this is where the stoichiometry becomes important when you want to do comparison of the rates. Okay. So if you take into consideration of the stoichiometry of the reaction, then you will find that they are almost the same, okay? So this is where you need to uh, differentiate between what is it that you want to find, okay? All right, so you can see here uh, for NO2, all right? 
towards the end at 100, it's also different. Okay. So as the reaction progresses, you have lesser reactant in the product. Okay. So uh, the uh, what do you call how fast the reaction progresses will in turn slow down once your reactant has reduced. Okay, as compared to what we watched earlier in the video that I shared just now. Okay, so this is just to explain in more detail. All right. Okay, now uh, uh, there is a mistake in this slide. Uh, I would like you to correct it. Okay, this one is inversely proportional. Uh, this is not equals. Okay, so in order to uh, summarize the whole thing, right? So your rate of reaction is basically talking about the time taken for the completion of your chemical reaction. So your rate is actually inversely proportionate to one over time, right? So you're actually talking about the rate of the change in the concentration of your reactants or your products over time. So that's why you have D uh, of your reactant or D of your product over DT, which is change in time. Okay, so please make this change. Eh? This is not equal. Eh? It should be inversely proportionate. Okay, all right. So uh, if uh, to go a little bit uh, deeper into the uh, what are the uh, other factors, right, that can affect your uh, what you call your reactions. All right. So there are a few things that can affect how fast or how slow your reaction progresses. Okay. So one of the thing is the ease of collision, okay? So uh, if it is very easy for the reactants to collide, your reaction will become more rapid, okay? For example, if it is a homogeneous reaction, usually the reactions are faster, okay? Now, if uh, in your, uh, for example, if two of your reactants are in liquid form, both are in liquid form, okay? So they can actually move faster, all right? But if you have one solid and one liquid and you put them together, and it must depend on the surface area of the solid, how much is being exposed, and only then that much can react. So that means if your solid, if it is, uh, let's say, in a pellet form, right? Let's say your, your what do you call, okay? If, you, if the surface area of the solid is like this, Right, and then you have your molecules, the liquid molecules. All right, so in order for them to, to collide, okay, all right, with your solid, if your solid, the surface area, okay, uh, is bigger, then there is more chances for collision, okay. So that means it's better if your solid it is in a fine powder, okay, versus the, versus the pellet, because usually in a fine powder, all right, okay. If it is smaller like this, then the surface is more surrounding the uh, uh, solid that is available for the collision between the reactants for the reaction to progress. Okay, so if it's a heterogeneous reaction, you need a higher surface area. Okay. Now, the other thing also is a, a factor that can affect will be the concentration. Okay. So if you increase the concentration of your reactor, your reaction will rate will increase because there is now more molecule per volume. Okay, so if there is more molecules per volume, so there is more collision between your uh, reactants. Okay, so then your reaction will be become faster. All right. Now another thing you can do is you can increase the temperature. Okay, so when you increase the temperature your reactants will have more energy to move, all right? So when they have more energy to move, then they will have more collision. So more collision will give you product faster, okay? Higher temperature, your molecules will move quicker. That will cause an increase in the collision and eventually cause an increase in the energy possessed during the collision, okay? So rate of reaction increases with increase in temperature. Okay, now another factor will be catalyst, right? So uh, although your catalyst is not involved in the overall balance equation, but the rate will be increased if you have catalyst. Remember back from our first lecture, so catalyst can help to 
reduce your uh, activation energy so that your EA then means your reaction can proceed faster. All right. So your catalyst will affect the type of collision. It can change the mechanism for the individual reactions to produce the from reactant to the products. Okay. So it can help to um, what you call change the pathway to a shorter pathway to produce your products. Okay. All right. So in order to summarize that we have uh, whatever the reactions that rates that we have learned so far, okay, so <clears throat> we have instantaneous rate, all right? So instantaneous rate of reaction gives a more accurate value in a smaller interval, which is the derivative, okay? So you can obtain it using the experimental data to plot a graph of concentration to a function of time. Okay, that's what we did earlier by using Graphmatica. Okay, and then you find the slope of the tangent as a specific point. Okay, so instantaneous rate talks about a specific point that corresponds to a time of interest. Okay, so you measure the change in concentration over a very small period of two or more times to get an average rate close to the instantaneous rate. Okay. And the reaction rate for that time is determined from the slope of the tangent line. All right. Now, then you have your average rate of reaction. Okay. An approximation of the rate, reaction rate in the interval. Right. It does not necessarily mean the reaction has this specific rate throughout the time interval or even at an, any instant during the time. Right. So we want to find from one time to another. Okay. All right. The change in the concentration. All right, and your initial rate is of course it's at the it's actually referring to the instantaneous rate at when t is equals to zero. Okay, so basically this is the three things that we actually learned today. All right, so you must be able to differentiate between them. All right, okay. So I will leave you with this question. Okay, try to do this question. Okay, determine the average rate of reaction, instantaneous rate of reaction, and initial rate of reaction for this uh, results here. You can also uh, plot your graph using Graphmatica. Okay, so what I will do is I will um, uh, prepare a Google uh, link. Okay, I will share it in the group later. Okay, so you prepare the answer and then you use the Google Drive link to submit your answers. Okay, prepare the, uh, the answers to this question and it will be individual answer, right? And then you can submit to the Google Drive, right? You can plot the graph using Graphmatica, okay? And then you can calculate this uh, and show the, the, the calculation for this, all right? Okay, all right. Uh, with that, uh, we can end the, the lesson for today. So next uh, week, we will start with a new set of um, uh, notes that I will be sharing uh, later in the Padlet. All right. Okay. So uh, that is all for today. Okay. Thank you very much for being with me. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Don't, don't forget the question, yeah? Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Doctor.